Good morning from another beautiful day here in Walt Disney World. We are starting off our day looking out over this nondescript road behind the beach club. Doesn't really matter though, it's still beautiful. As you guys saw yesterday was crazy. Okay, it wasn't crazy in a sense of like doing a lot of running around or anything like that, but it was, it was one of those days where things just were taking longer than necessary. They were really drawn out and the entire process of just changing hotels and getting where I needed to be was tedious and draining. And I honestly felt myself just being like, you know what, I need a break. And so that's what I did. I think it was around like seven o'clock that I jumped in the shower. And by the time everything got wrapped up and I was ready to call it a night, it was like eight, eight thirty. So really early night. But again, that's kind of the beauty of traveling by yourself is you can call the shots and you can decide how you want to go about doing your days. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to rest and relax. It's also important to take those times to relax. Like I said yesterday, I've said it before, I'll say it a thousand times again. It's important to take those times to relax because you don't want to burn yourself out. I know that not everyone is here for a really long time, but even if it's just like a nap in the middle of the day or chilling out by the pool, there are moments when you need to kind of recoup and just breathe and you have to take them. Otherwise, you're gonna end up just feeling terrible. Everyone's gonna have their cranky pants on and no one wants that. So let's move on over to the couch and sit for a minute while we talk about what we're gonna do today. Today is another Epcot day and this works out really well because I am staying at the beach club. We are walking distance from Epcot, but we're gonna do the day in two parts. So I'm gonna leave here shortly to go down. Well, we're actually gonna do a couple things. First, we're gonna do a quick drive by the pool to make sure that there is definitely not laundry at the pool. Normally there's laundry by every pool, but for whatever reason, I happen to be in the one room <laughs> or the one section of the resort where there is no laundry, according to the app. So I'm just gonna double check because the other laundry, it's not so far, although it looks really far on the maps, like everything always does, but I would hate to hike all the way down to that one to realize that there was just laundry right here and I just never checked and it made my life more difficult. So since I have to pass by it anyway, I'm gonna go and check, make sure that there is no laundry by the pool that's right near my room. Then we're going to make a quick stop to fill up our refillable mug with a drink that we can enjoy this morning. And then we're gonna walk all the way down to Epcot. Hopefully we can get in at 10.30. I know that Epcot doesn't open until 11, but I understand that we have this early park entry, whatever the words they're using right now is. You can get into the parks about 30 minutes earlier than general guests if you're staying on property. So. I want to try and see if that works out because I haven't had the opportunity to do it yet. I haven't rope dropped any park yet. So we're going to essentially rope drop Epcot, head our way into World Showcase. And my hope is that we can make our way toward Norway, maybe hit Frozen Ever After. I've been having very little success getting on that ride so far and then go to the Canada Pavilion DVC booth, get our button that we talked about, and from there, probably get an orange bird sipper, and that should probably conclude our morning by the time we walk all the way back to the International Gateway. I will check to see if there's any fun merchandise at International Gateway, because there is a shop right there, but that'll probably lead us into around lunchtime. It'll probably be pretty warm by then. So my thought is we come back to the room, we do some laundry, hang out for a little bit, have some lunch, and then go back out later tonight and enjoy a bunch of different food and festivities at Epcot. Does that sound good to you guys? There was one more thing that I wanted to mention. So last night I was sleeping and I totally forgot about how these rooms have motion sensor, motion sensor 
air conditioning. So I mentioned that the air conditioner is blowing. Can you see like it blowing on my hair? And it moves the air around really nicely. There's no ceiling fan. But last night, it kicked off a lot. Every time I kind of fell asleep, kicked off, and it didn't bring the room back up to temperature because it didn't seem like there was anyone in here. So my sinuses are crazy today because of the hot and cold and hot and cold. Every time I kind of moved around, the air conditioner would come back on and bring it down to 68, but then when I would sleep for any long stretch of time, it would warm up here and it would just be really, like, I'm just really stuffy today. So, um, that is definitely not a way you want to start your day, but if you're a person like me who suffers from sinus issues regularly, one thing that I would probably recommend, and this is something I do all the time, I can't believe I forgot it this time, is bring a small fan. Now they have these camping fans that they're not very expensive and you can kind of prop them up. When we get back home, I'll have to show you this fan and I bring it with me all the time and honestly I end up using one of these battery packs because it is a travel fan. I'll use one of these battery packs to, to keep it powered and um, it always works out really really nicely for me but I just I just forgot this time. That would at least keep the air moving on my face all night long and it would make this less gunky in the morning. So that's something to be aware of, especially in places like Beach Club. Where else? The Polynesian didn't have a fan, but the Polynesian wasn't a problem. I don't think that the motion sensor worked in the same way, if there was a motion sensor at all. And I wanna say that Boardwalk is going to be the same way as well. I don't remember though. Truthfully, I might buy myself a fan today they have the ones that like clip on to strollers, so I actually might pick one of those up. Depends on how expensive they are and how I'm feeling about it at the time. I'm saying this because I'm just, you know, I'm just getting my day started, so, but, um, you know, maybe my opinion will change by then. <laughs> anyway, let's get rocking and rolling. Man, remember when this used to be telephones? Now this... This right here is why you stay at the beach club or at one of the Epcot area resorts. Are you ready? Okay, that vehicle's not very awesome, but this is the boardwalk across the water. You get the beach here, similar to what you would get at like the Polynesian, lots of chairs pirate ship. Obviously very cool. There's the swan and dolphin. And if we keep walking along this path, we're going to end up at Epcot. So that's what we're going to do. All right. It is before 11. It's actually about 10:20. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with when you can get into the parks. But, we're here anyway. Now normally when you get in early, things are still closed. So, you're not gonna be able to get any food or anything like that right this second. But, the important thing about getting here early is that you can start moving through the park. So that's what we're gonna do gonna make our way to Norway so that we can hopefully get on the frozen ride so let's try it is definitely already very hot this morning so taking a break midday is going to be oh well, at least it's breezy that's what my hair is indicating right now taking a break midday is gonna be important so we're gonna do that so we don't burn ourselves out or fry in the sun. But for now, we're gonna enjoy this basically empty park. One more thing. This early morning access to the parks, even though it's not really early like it normally is, this is actually one of the perks of staying on property. If you're not staying on property, 
you can't get in the gates until they open to the general public. So 11 o'clock. But if you're staying at one of the Walt Disney World Resort hotels, you do have that early access. It used to be called Extra Magic Hours, but they did discontinue that. However, you still have the opportunity to get in early now. And that can really be the difference between getting a few big, you know, e-ticket attractions or to-dos knocked off your list. So, it's one of the reasons that I definitely recommend staying on property. There are others, we'll talk more about them later. But yeah, take a look around. track see if we can get lucky with that I'm hoping fingers are crossed so this this right here is the line for test track and it's currently at an hour so that's a little long especially because the park hasn't opened up yet now I could just wait in that line but why I know that that line will simmer down by the end of the night. And so I'm thinking that rather than waiting now during this hot part of the day, I'm at very least going to wait until later. And then even if it's an hour wait, I'll still be waiting at nighttime rather than in the middle of the day. So now we're going to head over to the Canada Pavilion, like we talked about before and see if we can find that DVC booth so that we can get our pin. So we just got the citrus shortcake and the smoothie that comes in the orange bird zipper. I did ask for the bird on the side so that it didn't get all gross, but I'm excited to give this a try. All right, let's do it. So we'll try the shortcake. It's pretty good. It's got like cookie crumbles and cream and some type of citrus sauce on there. Now the smoothie, it didn't get a straw. That's alright though. It's actually really nice. It's like a creamsicle. Nice and refreshing. I do like that. So I'm gonna eat this and then we'll keep going. <laughs> I really enjoyed both of those items. The cake was really good. The smoothie was really good. Actually, I think the smoothie is the thing that kind of took me by surprise because I was expecting it to be heavier and not so like light and refreshing, but it was like really light and refreshing, really good. We are on the boat dock right now. It's just after 11. I went to the Canada Pavilion's DVC booth and just had a nice little chat with the ladies over there. They were really great. And um, I got my pin. So we got another, another one done. That means we have done all of the four scavenger hunts at the four parks. Now I am waiting for the boat. If I turn around, you'll be able to see it. Hold on. See, it's right there. This is a friendship boat. 
and it goes from the beginning of World Showcase to the Morocco Pavilion. So it's a good way to, especially if you are coming from the main entrance, it's a good way to get across World Showcase without having to walk the whole loop because it is quite a loop and then <clears throat> work your way back. But today, since I've done pretty much everything I want to do for now on this end of the park, I am going to take the friendship boat over to Morocco and then what I'm thinking is, oh, I can't see it. This is a whole, whole thing with me, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to go to Morocco, scoot a couple over this way to hit up the America Pavilion and there I'm thinking about doing the smokehouse for a little light lunch. So, but uh, something is definitely happening over there. Let's see what it is. Oh, it looks like the princesses are coming by. I am loving the cavalcades. I know that we can't meet characters right now, we can't like give them a hug or get an autograph, but I love the cavalcades or the characters that have been like just dropped in the park. Like the like liver lips and the country bears and you know people that are just you know, even Donald Duck. I saw Donald Duck, Mickey and Minnie, all of these characters just kind of hanging out and I love that. I I feel like that hasn't been the case since like the 90s and I'm so glad it's back because it's nice. This is where they all are, you know? This is where they live. Alright, maybe they don't they don't live here, but that's what I think. That's what I've always thought as a kid. This is where they hang out. So why aren't they hanging out? Why don't they get in line to see them? Don't get me wrong. I love those meet and greets, but this is good too. I really do like this. We're in the France Pavilion. I thought we would take a quick look at this area back here. This is the new area where the Ratatouille ride is going to be. Look at the detail. Little rats. Oh, I even just look at it and it stops. Well, you can just kind of see it back there. Still construction walls, but it's kind of cool to take a quick jaunt back here. We are making our way to the International Gateway. Here, honey, let's sit down. And this is where you're gonna catch the Skyliner at the back of the park. Or if you're coming into Epcot via the Skyliner, this is where you would enter. This is also where you're gonna go if you are making your way, puppy dog, if you are making your way to the Epcot Area Resorts. So that's where we're going right now. Heading out, past security, past temperature check, and back to the beach club. So for your reference, right here beyond this tree is the Skyliner. And what we did is we just kept walking this direction. And that is going to lead us to this kind of fork. There's a bridge right here that's going to take you to the boardwalk or you can keep walking straight that's going to take you to the beach club and ultimately the yacht club. So see there's the boardwalk, you can kind of see it beyond the bridge. You'll be let out right near the ESPN club 
The boardwalk is a great place to enjoy an evening. They've got plenty of places to eat, drink. They've got a dance hall over there. Currently, a lot of it is closed, but it's still there and it will come back. Just not quite yet. I do have my suspicions though. I've been seeing a lot more cast members and I've been listening to some of the chatter. So I don't know, but soon my friends, I would say soon. I know I mentioned that I was gonna do laundry, but I didn't actually like take you down here to do laundry with me, but I did, I, um, I did it. Now in the other resorts that I was staying at, laundry was free. Although I can't speak to old QS cause I'm not sure. Here it is $3 to do a wash and $3 to do a dry. There are options if you don't want to do a full 60 minutes on the dryer that are less expensive, but I just did the whole thing. I can't complain. I was expecting to pay to do laundry the whole time, so the fact that I had to pay once is not a big deal, and uh, we move on. You know, it's not, it's not a big deal at all. But laundry's done. I gotta get out of here because it's a thousand degrees in this laundry room. So let's go. Just coming out of the laundry room and it looks like we have some cloud cover, which is actually really nice because even though it is hot out today, it's like 93 right now. The thing that is really killing me is the sun. The sun is just relentless today, which has made it really uncomfortable, but that's okay because it's already about five o'clock, which means perfect time to head back up to the room, get the laundry folded, and then head out. But first, we're gonna refill our mug again. I'm not sure what I'm gonna get this time. Another thing that's really nice about this resort, or similar resorts like Boardwalk, is that even if things are far, you still get to walk inside in the AC, which is really nice compared to like Saratoga Springs where you're walking outside no matter what. into my problem because who don't you want to come home with me anymore? or what about Ariel oh oh baby Moana I want you all I don't have enough room in my luggage this is why you gotta drive guys this is why you drive. Check these out. I've never seen these before. They're like a little vinyl pouch. That's kind of cool. Let's see, they are red. That's how much they are. They are $9.99. Lots of cute things on this rack. This is from Trowel and Trellis. This is that impossible boneless short rib so let's try this i think it's gonna be interesting so my initial impression is that this tastes like meatloaf which isn't bad and actually that's pretty cool because this is not meat um but the flavors are really good i love pretty much everything that is in here and frankly that's a pretty good sized portion if you were to ask me for i think it was under seven dollars so i'm happy i'm gonna finish this up and then we are gonna move on to something else that is delicious the weather is perfect right now so i'm loving it and i'm gonna enjoy the rest of the night because it's great now as far as value is concerned because that's something that's always on my mind i think that this was a really good value for me it was like the perfect size entree <laughs> i know that it's smaller but I don't eat a whole lot. But if you were going to be, let's say, 
enjoying this with a dessert and a drink, it would be perfect. And the price was very reasonable. So I would give it a shot, especially if you're interested in trying some of the impossible meat. Um, I've never had impossible brand before. And I have to say, I was very surprised with how meaty it was. And I, I know about the brand, so I, I know like what goes into making it, and it's it's very good. It did taste like meatloaf. It had like a meatloaf consistency, and the flavor was like ground beef, but very tasty. And I still enjoyed it. It definitely had some other flavors that were um, more Korean in nature, once you kind of got a bit of everything, but it was really good. Good, good price. I'd get it again. Oh, by the way, we're at Epcot. I, <laughs> I realized that I never, like, said we were leaving again, but we did. We're at Epcot, and we're just kind of going around enjoying things, so. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this quiet spot that I'm sitting in, and, uh, move on to wherever we're going next. I'm not sure. So I grabbed myself those boozy caramels and I was just going to sit down and enjoy all of them, but wow, they are serious. So I ate one. It was very good. And now I am going to save the rest. At least for right now. Let's see if this testing looks like it's probably done. I was hoping to get over here before they finished, but guess not. It's alright. So, I wanted to head to Test Track, but it's closed. So, we are going to head to Mexico because there is a backpack I need to get my hands on. And there's also the Grand Fiesta Tour for the five minute wait. So let's do that. I love the Mexico Pavilion, even though I have a soft spot for the Japan Pavilion because that's like home for me, a whole nother story. But the Mexico Pavilion is so unique. I love that you get to go inside to nighttime I love nighttime. I love just just the whole feel of that pavilion. It's great. So, but anyway, now we're about as far away from the international gateway as we can get. So we're just gonna walk our way back and then probably head out because we have done two and a half loops of World Showcase today. And that's, that's quite a bit. So, let's keep walking. Stop if we see anything interesting. And um, then probably head back to the hotel. Well guys, that is it. We came back to the hotel, showered up, got nice and clean and cozy, and now it's time to rest. Tomorrow we are headed to Hollywood Studios and I'm pretty excited. There's a lot I want to do, so we're going to try and knock some of the things off that list. But for now, I need some sleep. Thanks for joining me on today's adventure, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye.